Today, I'm going to share with you another great opportunity to make big money with gold, silver, and even copper. If you're watching this video, you're probably into physical silver and gold, maybe copper, if so, good for you. But what about your other investments? You know what I'm talking about, the non-tangible ones in your IRA or your private online brokerage account. Does the potential to make three times, five times, even 10 times your investment interest you? In this video, I'm going to talk with Raina Vig, the CEO and director of Blue Lagoon. No, I'm not talking about the 1980s movie starring Brooke Shields. No, Blue Lagoon Resources, which is a mineral exploration company. Notice I said mineral exploration. I didn't say gold mining company or silver mining. They do that very well, but they also focus on copper too. And they own not just one or two projects, but four amazing projects that again span gold, silver, and copper. So welcome, Raina. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. I'm super excited to get into your uh, mineral exploration company, Blue Lagoon Resources. But before I get into that and talk about your company, Raina, this is a precious metals stacking YouTube channel. Okay, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the terms, uh, you know, silver stacker or gold stacker. Uh, are you familiar with that? <laughs> are you kidding me? Am I familiar with it? Yeah. Check this out. Check this out. Is that a Johnson Matthew bar? Oh, that's gorgeous. Show this. Show me that again. Uh, oh, dude, you're a stacker. All right. All right. <laughs> Major props, dude. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's true. My, my viewers, my subscribers really love this stuff, Raina. I mean, they, they care a lot about, uh, you know, gold and silver spot prices, um, the premiums, uh, some, some invest in mining stocks too. So could you give me your take on the precious metals market and, uh, even, even base metals like this copper, because I have some people that stack copper too. Sure. Um, well, yeah, look, the precious metals uh, are, are what we believe are about to enter the super cycle, right? You know, mining mm -hmm. is very cyclical, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, it's been uh, 10 years that uh, it's been, uh, uh, you know, kind of not in vogue and yeah. it's finally coming around. And, and you know, copper just, you talk about copper, copper yeah. just hit a seven year high uh, uh, yesterday. So, wow. you know, it's, uh, and, and there's a reason for that, right? There's a, it's uh, all this, uh, all this uh, stimulus uh, mm. and all the money that's being printed, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, you know, one, one of the best things, one of the things that the governments love to do when they, to try to put people back to work is develop infrastructure. Okay. And copper needs, uh, uh, an infrastructure needs a lot of copper. So when you're building buildings, yep. roads, uh, you know, bridges, it needs a lot of copper. Mm. And on top of that, you know, you got the big, of course, uh, electric uh, car movement, right? I, I drive a Tesla, love the cars, it's amazing. <laughs> but you know, these, these cars, the electric cars take, more than four times the copper than a regular car does. So the whole world shifting to that. So the copper is going to be mm. in big, big demand, but uh, so is uh, gold and silver. And with all this unprecedented levels of printing money, with all this chaos that's happening all around the world, you know, with riots yeah. and with demonstrations. And then on top of that, you know, add in uh, the world pandemic and you've got the perfect trifactor. Okay. Oh. And that's the environment that gold uh, loves and silver mm -hmm. loves. So that's why uh, I, we all believe that it's uh, it's moving to much higher levels. I, I Goldman Sachs thinks that as well. They just reaffirmed their earlier $2,300 uh, forecast for gold next year. Do you, do you agree? Um, you think that's what's coming? Absolutely, 100%. Listen, uh, a, a lot more brighter people than me are saying that, right? <laughs> they have a lot of access to research and, and analysis. Bank of America, Goldman mm. Sachs, right? All of these uh, leading uh, institutions are projecting that uh, gold, uh, they expect it to go go higher. And you get pullbacks. Look, you just had, we just had a pullback. Yeah, we did. A few days ago. But these yeah. are natural gyrations of the market. But long-term, you know, prognosis really is that it's going to go higher. And there's fundamental reasons for that. You know, a lot of times people people don't understand, you know, how can that be? Why would it, uh, why would it go higher? Right. Well, you know what it's not that it's necessarily even going higher it's that the dollar is getting weaker and weaker good point 
right? Yep. And, 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 and real quick, one way to think about it, just so that maybe your audience can relate to this better, mm-hmm. to think of it this way. In the 70s, right, gold was uh, about $35 an ounce, right? Yes. And so now if you took, if you were in the 70s right now and, and we took a, a $35, or hard, you know, bills, cash, and put it in a little bag and buried it. And right next to it, we, we took a little uh, ounce of uh, uh, gold and buried it. Yeah. And come back today, yeah. right, and, 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 and take it out. What is that dollar, those $35, you know, what? What are you going to do with it? Buy two cups of coffee at Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But, right. The, same, but the same ounce of gold mm. is worth, what, 1800 1850 and who knows what? Mm. So that's the difference, right? Is that it, that gold is an asset, mm. right? Something that you're you're keeping and holding on to mm. to preserve your, your, uh, your wealth. A tangible asset that really does help us hedge against inflation. Um, yeah, I think you're definitely right. I think the upside potential is huge for next year. Uh, maybe... You know, some people are looking for it to maybe bottom out near 1700. Who knows? This decade is going to be an amazing uh, uh, time for precious metals and copper. I think you you said yep. super cycle, right? I love that. Yep. Yes. And, and you know what? Uh, I think we get too fixated on is gold going higher? Is it going to 2300? Yeah. Okay, going back to our example of $35 a cash or or, 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 or an ounce of gold, mm. I'll, take it at, I'll take that ounce of gold at 1700. <laughs> You know what I mean? I bet it's you would. Right? Yeah. Media gets us too focused on on, yeah. on getting on on high. Where is it going and all that? And and guess what? You know, even at seventeen hundred, mm. most mining companies are you know uh, extremely profitable. Yeah, I wanted so, to talk about that for a second. You, uh, mining sector. The I heard the industry median for what they call all in sustaining costs. That's basically, I think that's uh, capturing all the direct and in, in, uh, reoccurring costs required to mine. Right. So this all-in sustaining cost is around like 900 almost a thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars an ounce I don't know, that sounds like the margins for you know producers is quite high tremendous you know and, and that you're you're right i mean it depends of course on where you are and what part of the world you are and, and mm. costs vary but generally mm. you know the uh, i've often read the same that the rule of thumb is you know it's around a thousand dollars an ounce yeah. so at 1700 1800 19 or whatever those are very profitable that's a very profitable situation you know which is why a few weeks ago mm. Uh, you and your audience must have read mm. or heard about Warren Buffett entered oh. the uh, entered the arena. And, and oh, yeah. Barrett. That's why, mm. because uh, he's losing confidence in the dollar mm. and he sees that the Barrick and other companies like this are big producers are going to make a lot of profit. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't make sense to put your money there, right? Even, even if it just stayed flat at, uh, you know, $1,800 an ounce for the rest of 2021, that would be profitable for the industry, right? Yeah. I'll take that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So anyways, Raina, let's talk about you. Um, I think you've had over uh, 30 years of experience launching, I think, five businesses. Is that right? In private I industry? I mean, if you're old, man, yeah, it's, it has been a long time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you served as the president of Musgrove Minerals. You focused on gold and copper mining, chairman, CEO of Continental Precious Metals. Again, I think you were focusing on uranium there. Right. Impressive resume. But... Tell uh, the viewers about your big lesson that you learned with mining back in, I think, 2010, 2011. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I put uh, you on the spot there, man. I know. Those are those are memories that, I, that make me cry. <laughs> uh, you know, basically what happened was most of my career was in private industry, you know, 30 plus years of, uh, of family businesses, uh, five different uh, industries in, in different verticals. You know, basically, I'm a startup guy. I try to be the, you know, I learned a long time ago that I'm not that smart. Okay. So <laughs> the way I equalize that is I wor- out, outwork everybody. I, I just work super hard. I'm up early. I, I, I'm working till late. Mm-hmm. And the number two thing is I surround myself with the best and the brightest of that specific industry. So whichever yeah, industry I'm in, yep. I make sure that I, I'm the dumbest guy in the room and surround myself around, uh, you know, very, very bright uh, people uh, who <laughs> often can't do what I can do, which is execution. That's really my specialty is to laser beam focus on our task and get it across the finish line. Uh, um, yeah. So in 20, yeah. uh, 2011, yeah. a, very, a successful venture capitalist uh, who made most of his money in mining, uh, very successful, with, worth $300 million plus. I knew him very well. And uh, he said, he suggested, hey, come on into uh, my exciting world of capital markets. So I was looking for a change uh-huh. and I jumped in, put over a million bucks into the, into the markets and mostly in mining. And guess what? Uh, in about six months, uh, in about six months, it was pretty much evaporated. It was it was worth about ten grand. Ten like, grand? Oh, it was oh. crazy. 
Like, wow. what happened? This is not the plan. <laughs> but you know what? Those are the risks of being an entrepreneur, mm. right? You, know, it's not, you don't have Good the luxury point. of going from nine to five and getting a paycheck. Those are the risks. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, where this risk, there's also a reward, right? So mm -hmm. I took my wounds. I, uh, and it was nobody's fault. The mining sector collapsed, right? Remember I said it's sick. Absolutely, yep. So I happened to, if I was there 10 years before, I made a boatload of money. Or a right? little bit after. <laughs> exactly. I happened to, unfortunately, that, you know, that time was, it just sucked that money, you know, from me. Uh -huh. But that's okay. The yeah. industry collapsed and uh, I'm a big boy. I took over those companies <laughs> as CEO, mm -hmm. the one you mentioned. And uh, you know what? The fundamentals of business don't change, whether you're mm -hmm. running a restaurant or, a, you know, or an exploration company, the fundamentals mm -hmm. don't change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I did. I, I took over. I learned the ropes. Uh, I surrounded myself with some, you know, very, very good people. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. mining didn't turn. And then in about 2017, I eventually uh, exited those, com uh, those, those companies and turned them into uh, into technology companies. And then just to finish the story, mm -hmm. I was reading uh, about the macro picture. I was reading about what's happening around the world. Mm. And with all this uh, all this printing of money, mm. you know, uh, at unprecedented levels mm -hmm. and governments control, I knew instinctively, you know what, copper, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, precious metals, gold and silver mm -hmm. are going to be in play. And I thought, you know what, I, people thought I was crazy two years ago when I started the company. Lagoon Resources. Oh, okay. And, but you know, you got uh, well, you got to get a little bit lucky. You got to pick the right trend. Yep. And yep. And like you said, you have to pick the right people. And I want to jump on that because, yeah, you know, Rain, I'm a newbie in this space. I'll full disclosure. I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm learning. And uh, one of the th areas that I've uh, I look for is a few critical areas to evaluate in a mining company before I start investing. And one of them is management, also yeah. location, right? Uh, the status of the projects. I like insider ownership, you know, uh, and company financials. So those are the those are the five. But I want to start with management. I'm going to show people right now. It's uh, Carmelo Morelli, Bill Cronk, Norman Brewster, and Gurdeep Baines. Can you tell us about your team? Yeah, look, uh, you, you, all those points, by the way, that you say, uh, you uh, you hit are you're bang on. Those are the those mm. are the key. Uh, factors that you want to look at when investing in any company mm. and yes yeah, so I, I started putting together a great team uh I'll give you a couple of examples so bill cronk he's our chief geologist mm. uh the chief geologist for a, a big company called dundee precious metals for many many years uh so he got a tremendous amount of experience uh, all over the world mm. so i was very fortunate that i got bill uh in in between you know sort of job <laughs> uh -huh. and i took him up so uh yeah, so he's he's just brilliant I'm so so thankful to have a have a, a guy like him him on my team mm. and then i have uh you know I, I i started building my advisory board and i have a gentleman by the name of Giannis Tatitos, who is a 19 year veteran of bhp one of the biggest mining companies in the world huh. so he's very connected uh -huh. And through him, he's led me to other contacts and other technical people that are at you know top top tier. So that's just an example of right. of, uh, of uh, people that are surrounding me as I help to build uh, you know this company. I think Norman Brewster also interested me when it came to uh, the copper. I think he's a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but CEO of Cadillac Ventures Inc. He's he uh, at uh, development projects in Ontario around copper. Yes, so absolutely. That's, that's impressive. And, and he's one of the few geos. You know, you know, it takes a lot to put a mine uh, into uh, into production. He's a very senior geo, uh, has you know years and years uh, uh, of experience, and has actually put a mine into production that was sold to Trafigura, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, 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 companies in Europe. Uh, mm. You know, in the space. So mm. you know, those are all. Uh, th 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 that's a wealth of experience. For, you know, for just the three of the people that you just mentioned that I <laughs> gone. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like you have a great team, Raina. So uh, let's let's get into the location of your mines because and the status of the uh, uh, project. So this is this is where it gets really exciting, people. You bought Doe Mountain, um, and you you did it without spending any cash. It was a share only deal, and you got it for about half of what the previous owners had already spent on it, and. With only a, another one million dollars needed to make it production ready, Raina, how the heck did you pull that off? Uh, uh, patience, uh, negotiating uh, skills, you know, and and a little bit of uh, timing and luck on your side, right? Mm. You know, when I was growing up, it's funny, you know, the the lessons that you learn as a kid, uh, it, it's it's funny how they they're painful then, but you 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 realize how important they were. You know, when I used to go to a, a store with my dad when I was you know 12, 13, 14 years old, you know, and uh, he would uh, bargain with the sales clerk to buy a shirt, 
you know, or a pants. <laughs> yeah. As a kid, you embarrass your dad. You know, you don't you don't go to Sears and, and bargain for a shirt. But you know something? Mm -hmm. He always got a deal. Isn't that like, amazing? It was amazing. Mm -hmm. That stuck with me all these years, mm -hmm. right? So when I did this uh, deal, I, I uh, they were wonderful people, but I negotiated hard with them. Right. And I, 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 you know, they looked at my track record and I said, look, I believe I have the ability to execute because you know what? They spent, you know, uh, on this property, uh, more than more than uh, 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 almost sixty eight million dollars has been spent over the years, and the twenty eight million just in the last dozen years by my by the, 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 my predecessors right. that these people I just bought it from, and they literally got and that was all done uh, that was all spent on mine development, yep. and infrastructure, and permitting. Right, right. And they literally got it to the one yard line, and <laughs> we just ran out of time because they were they were in a bad mar mining market. They couldn't raise the last million. You said a million. No, that's U.S. Is we need about a million and a half Canadian. Okay. Canadian. And uh, you know your your dollars are worth a lot more than uh, <laughs> for now. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. When I, tell you what, but when I take this, when I take this yeah. uh, and value it here in, in Canadian dollars, uh -huh. it makes it better because it, it's it's the high, the number is high. <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, but joking aside. Yeah, you know these guys uh, just uh, unfortunately uh, you know, ran out of time. They're mm. 83 years old, and uh, you know not uh, in, the, in the best of health. Mm. So they just couldn't get it across the finish line. So along comes a guy like me. You know, <laughs> we bought the project mm. with zero cash, as you mentioned, and all stock at my highest valuation. You know, of, of the company at the time. This is before COVID and right. before all the variations of the market. Right. So you know, we our timing was great. Mm -hmm. and, we just yeah, we we bought it for all shares, uh, you know, uh, escrowed and tied up for over thirty months. So it was just a perfect scenario for our shareholders. That's awesome. Which goes back to the to the to what you said earlier, right? Mm. It's very important for for management to have uh, you know all all uh, all these skills in right. order to deliver value for shareholders. Well, you have uh, you have four incredible um, expansive land packages up there. I mean, they're really amazing. I'm, I'm showing the hectares. Now, a lot of people don't know what a hectare is. I, I, the Dome Mountain Project, uh, 11,000 hectares. That's guys, that's 27,000 acres, over 42 square miles. That is huge. Uh, and it has an incredible history of producing high grade gold. Is that correct? Yeah, so the so the mine does right. The actual yep. where the mine is, and there's 15 veins uh, on uh, you know surround in the in the surrounding area that we already know about. What happens is that uh, the, mm. uh, the, uh, the 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 they focused on just the the mine itself, mm -hmm. which is really less than 10 percent of the property, and so the 90 percent of the property had never been explored, and that's the, really the most exciting part. Uh, clarification on that. You, are you saying the previous operators didn't drill those 15 veins that you were talking about? Uh, limited. So all really? the veins have some work. Yeah, they all they all have some work uh, done on them. Oh. Uh, you know, some of them are uh, outcropping right there. So so you know the miners just just would pick at it and t you know take the ore, take whatever they could. They didn't really spend much time on it. They only spend the time on this one particular vein called the Boulder vein, okay. which is where the mine is. But the ninety percent of that acreage, that hectares that you just talked about, wow. uh, was was never explored. And by the way. We've added almost 8,000 to the 11,000. We're just shy of uh, 20,000 uh, 20, hectares now because what happened was when we flew, you know, it's called the airborne uh, survey. When we yep. when we flew that with the with the uh, with the helicopter, right. uh, you know, you're looking for conductors. You're looking to see because you can't. Unfortunately, you don't have Superman. You can't go X-ray vision look down there. Right. But next best thing to Superman is uh, is flying over with the helicopter and looking for conductivity. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's what the whole property just lit up and our oh. technical team was so excited and uh, and and you know you talk about copper you're one of the few interviewers who's talking to me about copper one of the things there's actually five new targets we found on this property mm -hmm. and one of them is a is a is a classic copper porphyry uh signature so we're very excited about going there and that could be a complete company uh builder and a changer right there is if when we go in there next year and we start doing work and drilling wow. if we hit something big oh baby we're, we're talking like oh, copper man. beyond the gold and everything else so we'll see i caution everybody i don't want to be over, over promotional is always risk right, right. you know you're right good point that, but that's the beauty of this business right hmm. is that you have to be able to uh, uh evaluate the the risk versus the reward and it, in the mining sector, you know, uh, when these prices, you know, when, when gold goes up a little bit, mm -hmm. the mining, junior mining companies, as long as they have good management and as long as they have good projects, they go up many multiples of that. 
Sure, it's a highly. This is a highly leveraged investment we're talking here, people. This, this is a speculative play. The potential here is big, I think, but you got to do your own due diligence. You got to check out what you're doing and understand that there is quite a bit of risk involved. So, but to say that though, this this mine, the Dome Mountain gold mine, could be could produce a staggering amount of gold and silver. We talk a lot about gold here, but silver is a, a significant byproduct of what yeah. you're mining, right? Uh, what's the ratio? What's what's yeah, what's the it. ratio? Again, again uh, you know, most interviewers never ask me that, and, and, and I love, I'm glad you asked me this. <laughs> oh, I love, love the it. silver, that's why. Because here's why it's important. Because yeah. most, most uh, uh, people in my position, mm -hmm. right, they don't really, traditionally, you, we don't really look at that, uh, those numbers, because, you know, silver wasn't uh, in, in favor, the price wasn't that attractive. Right. Uh, and, uh, but now in the mid 20s, and a and, and lot of people like Eric Sprott and real mm -hmm. thought leaders in the space are talking about silver going $50 plus. So, yeah. but even in the mid 20s, so our Boulder vein currently has a one to four ratio. So for every one ounce of gold, Ooh. we have uh, a little over four ounces of silver. So oh my that's word. super exciting. That's like getting the silver for free almost, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, right? Because when we send our material to the <laughs> mill, it's not like we're, uh, you know, they tell us, well, we're going we're gonna to charge you this much for the gold and this much for the silver, <laughs> right? All our costs are based, you know, technically generally on, you know, on, on, on the gold. And uh, so the silver in itself is, are, is going to uh, give us uh, a tremendous amount of uh, return wow. and pay for the, uh, pay for, if nothing else, our, our, our GNA, our, you know, our general uh, yeah. administrative work. So yeah, it has oh. a lot of it for sure. Oh, and I want to show uh, the Doe Mountain facilities. Uh, what, what's happening <laughs> with Doe Mountain? Well, they, they've, uh, the, the actual mine, you know, there's a, there's actually a, a great video if your audience wants to see it. It's very mm. short. It's only about two minutes. Uh, they can go to our website, bluelagoonresources.com. Okay. And under the video tab, uh, you know, they'll see yes. the, uh, the video. And it shows the whole property, you know, in terms of uh, the mine. You'll, they'll see almost a thousand meters of development. Mm. A huge tunnel, right? That's been, that's, that's where all this money's gone, right? And is right. that development, this huge hole in the side of a mountain, basically, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I mean, you, I mean, when I, when I say huge, you, you can drive a truck through it, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, goes right to the face of, of, of the vein, so we can mine it right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's got you know modern generators and 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 and, and infrastructure of uh, buildings and and uh, you'll see it on the video. That's great. Yeah, I will include that link in the description below, guys. Definitely check it out. But it's you know this is British Columbia, but at the same time, this is a great location, isn't it? I mean, it's. Yes. Pretty easy to get to. You don't need a helicopter to fly in there, right? Well, you you hit it uh, uh, right on the on, on the, uh, the nail on the head. There, a lot of these properties are remote. They're in. Mm -hmm. in you got to take helicopters and and build uh, expensive camps. We have none of that. We are outside of a a, a town uh, called uh, Smithers, uh, Northern British Columbia. <laughs> Smithers. It's a short, uh, less than an hour, 45, 50 minute drive oh, wow. all year round. Right, the 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 forest service, uh, the forest companies, it's it's all logging area. Wow. So the forest companies will uh, go and maintain that road, and we just have a small road that we maintain. It's about uh, it's about it's about a, know, two and a half, three three miles less than, less than forty three miles, about four kilometers. So whatever mm -hmm. that works, like miles. Uh, so that's all we Pretty maintain. Close. Wow. Yeah. So people, the miners or the drillers, they can go there. Uh, they can work during the day, come home, be with their family, have <laughs> dinner, kids, you know, kids get night. Oh, and that's very cool. important because it, it helps us keep our cost low and it helps retain talent. Good point. Who wants to, yeah. Who wants to be in the, in, in, you know, in, in, in the bush for two mm -hmm. months at three months at a time. Right. That's great. All right. So I, I did mention uh, insider ownership as being one of the things that, that I really care about uh, in the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but, you know, I basically look for companies where the management owns, you know, a significant number of shares, um, you know, versus the float. In other words, I like to see some skin in the game. And yeah, help me here. Up. What what have you done here? Look, I, I uh, uh, last year, you know, I wrote a, a personally, I wrote a check uh, for $300,000 uh, at a dollar. So uh, significantly. Uh, dollar a share? That's correct. 
significantly oh. higher than what the price is at now. But wow. remember, yes, people say, well, aren't you worried or how come the price is down now? <clears throat> well, look, uh, uh, COVID happened. And, you know, so every company got affected, right? So that, that people panic and, you know, they take money out of the market. So obviously you're, you're just talk, every stock gets affected. Yeah. And then also, if you remember March, April, uh, the, the, the New York, uh, you know, the Dow, everything was going up and down like a yo-yo, right? It would go up 2,000 points, drop 1,000 points. I mean, right, it right. Break it would go. So all those thing, thing have, the things uh, make an impact. So no, no, no word. Uh, as, if, if I was a trader, I'd be worried. As an investor, you don't worry because you look at mm. a year to three year minimum horizon. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about where we are today. I'm looking at where are we going to be in 18 months, in two years, in three years. From now. I, I love that, Reina. All right. So that's insider ownership. But the last thing I wanted to talk about is your company's uh, you know, financial shape. Specifically, I really want to talk a little bit about um, uh, your debt level your share yep. structure, uh, maybe some potential for you know, your, your stock performance. So, so uh, easy answer, you know, so we have over, over $6 million still in treasury and we have, uh, we have uh, uh, pretty much zero debt. We have, all we have is our day-to-day -day payables, right? So again, wow. I'm, I'm very prudent. I'm very careful of mm. how, uh, you know, we spend our money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we're, we're in fantastic shape. Uh, you are, your, your, your risks seem to be relatively low. Um, I, I definitely see, you know, in comparative to, to other, you know, micro caps in the, in the industry too. I, I, I like, uh, one of the things that I'm showing is some of the areas that you have, uh, reduced your risk. So you're bang on, you're bang on. Look, there's always risk, of course, right. Sure. But it's a, matter of, it's a matter of looking at how much has this, uh, uh, uh any company, how much have their products been de-risked? Mm. And, uh, and, I, and and we believe that ours are significantly de-risked because we always we already have a mining permit for seventy five thousand tons a year. Mm. We already have an a, a environmental uh, a permit. And these are very difficult to get, and, and it takes like twenty years from a be to start to finish to get to a kind of a <laughs> mine permitting stage. Yeah. And I'm just fortunate that these people before me had spent a dozen years, mm -hmm. you know, doing all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so. So they did. They did. Uh, you know, most of the heavy lifting, and uh, you know, I guess I'm like I'm like the general. You know, kind of kind of coming in, and uh, and uh, kind of uh, kind of taking the credit, I guess, uh, or at least uh, hopefully I will be soon. But 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 having said that, yeah. uh, my shareholders should be happy uh, if I'm able to uh, uh, you know execute mm. on the plan that we have in place in, uh, in front of. In terms of market cap, where are you now? Uh, we're sitting at about uh, about fifty million Canadian. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. We're, and uh, we, we, when we believe we're undervalued, how do how do mining companies, uh, you know, advance, you know, uh, uh, their market cap, you know, their share price? Well, execute on the plan and show, right? So we believe uh, uh, today we're not mining. We believe that we are moving, you know, uh, uh, diligently towards that goal and to be in a position to where we can make that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to increase value. And and then, of course, this 90 percent of the property we talked about that has not been uh, explored. Right. And when we did this is all news release, you know, you, sure. you, you can look at the artists yeah. look at it and you can see how what I'm talking about, how uh, there's the, this 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 amazing uh uh, a porphyry uh, 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 signature. So all those things are going to add value. 2021 mm -hmm. is going to be a very busy year and a game changing year for this company. Starting January 11th, we're going to start drilling the biggest program drilling program that's ever been conducted on the, on this uh, on this property. To the One mineral. month from now, if people wanted to get more information about this, Reina, um, how would they reach out to you? Do they call you directly or or go to the website or what? Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, the best is to go to the website bluelagoonresources.com. There's an email link there. Email, email. Uh, it, uh, send an email. It'll make its way to me. I'm a very engaged CEO. I, I talk to all my shareholders, big or small. And uh, yeah, email me. I'll get back to them as, as, at the earliest possible and uh, and uh, answer whatever questions uh, that I can. Well, this has been really fun and informative. I've learned a lot. I hope uh, you've enjoyed this too. Watching. Thank you, Reina, for for taking Thank the you. time with it's me. A, it's been a it's been a pleasure. All and, right. uh, Show, show it yeah happy stacking take care <laughs> remember people this is a speculative play it's a highly leveraged investment that's where the big payoff can come you can make big money in gold silver and copper when you invest in a junior mining company but do your own due diligence please check them out be careful with your money don't just do it because you know yankee likes them 
But you might want to put them on your watch list, especially before January 11th. Again, the information on Blue Lagoon resources will be in the description of my video, so check them out. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.